Some of the physiological and psychological effects at therapeutic dose is elevated mood, increased alertness, enhanced cognition, decreased fatigue, enhanced exercise performance, appetite suppression, increased reaction speed, and increased motivation. And whilst narcolepsy is, is characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, uh, cataplexy, as well as sleep paralysis. And so there's a particular set of neurons that are uh, imbalanced that cause this issue with REM sleep and daytime sleepiness. And they're called orexin neurons. And by having a stimulant, it can basically accommodate for this imbalance. Contraindications are cardiovascular disease, overactive thyroid, and drug abuse. And an overactive thyroid is typically going to lead to increase the effect of catecholamines, which also will uh, have similar effects as a stimulant. And that will make sense to why they wouldn't want to basically put you on another stimulant. Not that your thyroid is a stimulant, but it's acting kind of like one by uh, releasing too much thyroid hormone. Because uh, if you want to know the details, is that thyroid hormone uh, eventually causes increase in the expression of beta adrenergic receptors on the heart. And these receptors respond to something known as epinephrine, which causes your heart to have a greater force of contraction. And you don't want your heart to, to be working hard, right? You don't want to overwork your heart because of all the uh, side effects that come with that, right? This makes sense because this drug has a high potential of abuse, and that's why it's a Schedule II drug. Um, in this slide, I really want to talk about uh, the common misconception that Adderall is meth. It's not a misconception in the sense that it's a similar drug, but at the same time, it's a much more potent drug, and you can see that based on the dosage. So the range of uh, meth is 5 to 25 milligrams. The range uh, of what's allowed for uh, Adderall per day is 5 to 40 milligrams. So that's the main difference. The reason is we have a blood-brain barrier, and uh, things that are more lipophilic, that have more uh, structures like a methyl group that, are, that don't interact well with water, are more permeable. Here is this arrow showing you that this is like a typical layer of a normal blood vessel as opposed to the blood-brain barrier where it basically the arrow doesn't go through very much because you have this elaborate architecture. Uh, and that's because our brain uh, has to protect itself from pathogens and it's a very important organ, obviously, right? At least for most of us. So between two neurons is something known as a synapse. That's where neurotransmitters are going to leave one neuron to get to another neuron and bind to the receptor, all right? So what happens is there's something known as a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. When something known as an action potential goes down a presynaptic neuron, it causes something known as a voltage-gated calcium channel that's not drawn here to cause vesicles to release neurotransmitters in the space known as a synapse or the synaptic cleft. And hopefully those neurotransmitters can make it to the postsynaptic receptor and bind, right? So this DR stands for dopamine receptor, all right? And then we have these things known as transporters like DAT, which stands for dopamine transporter that bring back in the uh, dopamine, all right, to, to basically terminate the signal. Same thing was uh, same thing with CERT, which is a serotonin transporter that brings in serotonin. And that's what SSRIs target. They prevent the reuptake of serotonin, okay? Now, there's also another way that this uh, neurotransmitter can be removed, and that's by something known as monoamine oxidase. It just basically uh, oxidizes them to make them inactive. Uh, another thing that meth is able to do is it causes something known as a reverse transporter. So something that will normally bring something in, it spins it around to where it basically ends up releasing things. So the way I would think about it is maybe you have a vacuum that basically is normally pulling stuff this way, and then I turn it and now it's bringing stuff from inside to outside. Another thing it does is there's something known as VMAT. VMAT is what puts these neurotransmitters into vesicles. It stands for vesicular monoamine transporter 2, which makes sense, right? Vesicle, which have monoamines as neurotransmitters in them. Transporter, because you have this transporter there, 2, because that's probably the uh, version or the isoform. Who knows, right? And so as you can see here, meth, methamphetamine, goes and blocks that. So these neurotransmitters can be reuptake. They can be reuptaken. So what does that mean? There's more in the cytoplasm that can be released, all right? Uh, and I think that's it. We also talked about the enzyme, yep. So, and this slide is really to show you that uh, you can't trivialize small molecular changes. 
On the left here we have serotonin, which our brain makes naturally, and it's also known as 5-HT. Why is it 5-HT? Because the conventional way to count is you start right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5-hydroxy, five 5-H five for the hydroxy, tryptamine, all right? And then we have DMT here, which is in the DM is for dimethyl. You have a methyl group here and a methyl group there. They didn't write the CH3, but if you don't see a CH3, it's implied that it's, uh, it's there also, okay? These very similar looking drugs have completely different uh, effects. This is a hallucinogen, and this is, a, and this is an endogenous normal uh, neurotransmitter. This is a really potent one that they use for ceremonies. Uh, I think it's called ayahuasca. And this is what we just talked about here. We have meth, methamphetamine blocking the reuptake of dopamine. And here we have the reverse transporter that's causing dopamine to get released. And we also have meth. Uh, that's blocking the dopamine from being taken into the vesicle. I put here that uh, the reverse transporter, uh, a VMAT2 that cannot take up neurotransmitters, so theoretically uh, amphetamine will be stronger than cocaine, right? And we're going to look at it in just a second. So cocaine is pretty much a dopamine transporter inhibitor. It prevents the reuptake of dopamine. DAT typically takes dopamine out of the synapse and back into the presynaptic neuron. By blocking that, you can have more dopamine available in the synapse to bind to the postsynaptic receptor. All right? So the duration of action is four and a half hours. How does your body get rid of it? Just like many other drugs, the liver is responsible for uh, a lot of the metabolism. This is to show you that these uh, monoamines, besides uh, serotonin, are derived from uh, one amino acid, which is tyrosine.